Hey, what's up? Time to do another urinary system video. So let's get started. So we got a nice big model here. We're gonna go big, little, and littler in that order. Let's start over here with this nice kidney. Very nice kidney-shaped kidney. Um, let's do it. We got a fibrous capsule on the outside. We've got a cortex right here where the urine is gonna be made. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven renal pyramids collectively making up the renal medulla. We've got some cortical-like tissue in between the pyramids. Easy to see on this one right here, kind of hard to see on the other ones. But that is a renal column right there. We remember from last time that we make urine. Maybe you're watching this video first. Maybe there was no last time. I don't know. <laughs> but we make urine in the renal cortex. We're so professional here, aren't we? We make urine in the renal cortex. The urine travels down through the renal medulla. I like how striated the pyramids appear because they've got lots of tubes and blood vessels and things in them. And the urine comes down here. The urine drips out of the renal papilla into a nice minor calyx. This is one minor calyx. The word calyx means cup and it looks kind of like a cup if you use your imagination. And another minor calyx over here. You can see there are people who are sticking their pencil in here and writing and saying, ooh, is this the minor calyx? And going like this. And they were right. And we got two minor calyxes joined to make a major calyx right here. Another minor calyx over here, more over here. Eventually we get a renal pelvis right here. The renal pelvis narrows, leaves the hilum, and becomes the ureter, onward to the urinary bladder. So, we gotta talk about blood flow now. And of course, urine is made from blood, so we gotta follow the pathway of blood in and out. And we're gonna start over here with a renal artery. It's gonna come in and branch to give us a segmental artery, a bunch of segmental arteries here. This is one. Segmental arteries, like their name implies, go to different parts, different segments of the kidney. Segmental artery comes up. It is branching here to give us some interlobar arteries. Interlobar arteries come up, and they go between the pyramids. They go through the columns, and they're going to branch too. Like we see this guy coming up. He's giving us two branches, one going each way. These branches of the interlobar artery... They are curvy, they are arch-like, so we say they are arcuate. So this is an arcuate artery right here, several arcuate arteries, really one over each pyramid in this model here. And coming off the arcuate arteries, we get these guys going straight up into the cortex. They are cortical radiate arteries, you can also call them interlobular arteries. Now. This model is also kind of exaggerating some other structures. We see these little balls of capillaries here. These are called glomeruli, and that's where the urine production process really begins. And I think we're going to come back to these guys when we move on to the next part of this model. But eventually the blood has got to leave the cortex, and we're going to take a cortical radiate or interlobular vein. We're going to get to an arcuate vein, which is right here. Then we have an interlobar vein, and the interlobar vein comes between the pyramids, and it comes back, and this is where it gets kind of weird, because the interlobar veins are coming together and joining up, but they're still interlobar veins. There's no segmental vein. Like, this is a segmental artery, but this is still an interlobar vein. And eventually the interlobar veins come together, and we get the nice renal vein, who is over here. And that's pretty much it for blood flow. So... I think that's pretty much it for this mo this particular model, too. Why don't we jump over to this guy? And on this guy, we've got more of a close-up. This is the renal cortex right here, and this is the medulla down here. This is the fibrous capsule. This is my favorite thing to put on a lab exam, just like this little part right here. Now let's go back over here for a second. That's my favorite vein to put on right there, too, that inner low bar vein right there. Or that guy, because I mean, I'm trying to trick people. That's what I do. And it's right next to the segmental artery, so people think that's a segmental artery. It's got to be a segmental vein, but unless they know it, they'll, they'll, they'll do that and I'll get it wrong. All right, I'm giving away too many secrets here. Let's go back over here. We had the fibrous capsule. We have the cortex. We've got the medulla. 
we see an arcuate artery right here. Coming off of it is a cortical radiate or interlobular artery. And we see these little guys here. They're going out towards these spherical capillaries here. This guy right here is an afferent arteriole. I'm going to say afferent just so you know which one I'm talking about. It's carrying blood to this ball of capillaries, which is called a glomerulus. And that's where blood gets filtered in the process of, your, of or urine formation really gets started. The guy coming out of the glomerulus, this little guy, that little guy, that little guy, that little guy, is an efferent arteriole. And the efferent arteriole gives rise to a set of capillaries called the paratubular capillaries that are going to be involved in two other processes in urine formation, one called reabsorption, one called secretion. And eventually, the paratubular capillaries will get blood back to a interlobular or cortical radiate vein, and we get back to an arcuate vein, and then back to an interlobar vein, which we don't have in this particular middle piece. Now, this little ball of capillaries here, the glomerulus, and we've got a bunch of them right here. There's probably a million of these things in each kidney, somewhere around a million of them. And it's where you filter the blood, and you're constantly filtering the blood. And the question is, well, where does the filtered blood end up going? And we're going to call the filtered blood filtrate, and it's going to end up in this set of tubes we have over here. Now, on this model, we've got these tubes for carrying filtrate and urine over here and blood vessels over here, but in reality they're actually together and they're interacting. But over here we've got tubes that carry filtrate, the fluid that got filtered, and carry urine. Now this structure right here is the glomerular capsule. As its name implies, inside it we're going to find a glomerulus. We're going to find one of these guys inside it. But this is the glomerular capsule. We're looking at the outside of it. The outside of it is the parietal layer of the glomerular capsule. That's what, inside here is where blood gets filtered, where we start making urine. And we end up making this fluid called filtrate. And filtrate basically has water and small stuff, water and small solutes, good solutes and bad solutes. Coming out of the glomerular capsule is this tube right here. It is next to, it is nearby the glomerular capsule, so we say it's proximal. Now this model doesn't do it justice, but this tube is actually really, 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 really twisty. And the better word for really, really, really twisty is convoluted, and it's a little tube. So it's a tubule, so it's a proximal convoluted tubule. How are we doing on time? Are we, we got two more minutes. We'll see if we can finish this part. Maybe we'll come back and make another one for the next one. And this proximal convoluted tubule here is where you do two big processes for urine formation. One of them is called reabsorption, where you steal the good stuff that you don't want to pee away back from the fluid that got filtered, from the filtrate. So if there's anything in here that we don't want to pee away, but it got filtered because it was small, something like glucose is the great example, you're going to steal the glucose back from this guy and get it back into the blood. And that process is called reabsorption. Also, we add stuff to the filtrate here. So something that did not get filtered, but we still want to pee it away, we're going to add it to the filtrate. Now, eventually, this proximal convoluted tubule, and you're not allowed to write PCT on your lab exam, okay, is going to end up forming a more straight tube that goes down and back up. This is called the loop of Henle. And the loop of Henle does some really cool stuff. And the mechanism we're not really going to get into, but the loop of Henle basically helps you concentrate your urine. Now, eventually, the loop of Henle gets to a distal convoluted tubule where you do a little bit more reabsorption and secretion, and then the resulting urine ends up in a collecting duct where you reabsorb a little bit more water. But eventually, you've got urine by the time you get in here. And see you next time.